Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our next class. Before we get started, I just want to point out, um, I do not have a topic planned for next week yet. Um, and I, I can totally choose what to do, and that will be fine, but giving you a chance to have a little input. I know uh, camp next week might influence some uh, attendance, and that's okay, but at least we'll be able to go through the stuff. This will be on YouTube, um, and so if there's anything specific, any of the ones that we have not covered, like the Unitarian Universalist Association or secular religions or Christian science, if that's what you want to do, or if there's anything else, any other like major thing that comes up when you're talking to people about the Lord, uh, what sorts of topics, what sorts of uh, ideas, um, what sorts of things do you want to be better equipped to handle? Uh, if you can think about that and let me know, uh, and, and I'll, I'll try to work something up. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll just pick something and go with it. But that will be for next week. We only have, so that we have this week, we have next week, which is just whatever you guys want to do. And then the final week, I, I do want to do Scientology, so... Um, we'll, we'll finish strong with that one. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what we want to do. Before we start, Kyle, could you lead us in a prayer? Thanks. Amen. Thank you. So we are going to look at, dive into, do kind of a deep dive into the history of Mormonism, where it came from, how it started, uh, some of the, the theology behind it, and also, uh, as, as we do with most of these, try to separate that from the individual people who are of the Mormon faith, uh, part of the LDS church, um, that uh, you will, would be likely to encounter. Um, this is one of those, it's, it's really interesting. Um, in, in my research on this, I heard a phrase that kept popping up, and I thought it was just a really interesting way to describe it. But Mormonism is, a, a ty is something that, that tries to look like Christianity. Uh, and they use a, a lot of the same vocabulary, but it's a completely different dictionary. So, like, you hear a lot of the same words, but what... What words you hear, you think you know what that means and you can make connections, but those are not at all what uh, someone who is of the Mormon faith would actually believe. Um, and, and we'll go through some examples of that. Um, there are aspects of some of the other religions that we've talked about that are, are going to be very similar. Um, when we were talking about Islam and um, the Prophet Muhammad and how all that happened, uh, very similar beginnings to Mormonism as well, and so we'll look at that. Um, now, do you remember when we were talking about Hinduism, how many gods there were? Uh, do you remember, like, ballpark? Yeah, like 300 and something million. Like, it, it, was, it was a lot. Like, and, and so the, the amount of gods in Hinduism. Uh, believe it or not, Mormonism uh, blows them out of the water. Um, so the um, amount of gods, the number of gods in Mormonism is unlimited, uh, infinite amount of gods. Um, it's the most polytheistic uh, religion on the planet, actually. You would not get that from uh, a short discussion with the Mormon elders on your door. Uh, I, I don't think you would, you would get that. And I, I suspect if you ask them how many gods are there, um, they'll respond one, of course. Um, and, you know, that's Elohim, um, and that's, that's the name of, of God. But uh, when, you, when you deep dive into it, 
Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. And to be honest, some of the Mormon missionaries that come to your door probably do not know that that's what the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teach. Um, but, you know, the overall teaching there is, just a, a quick preview, is that uh, God, uh, th- who we would consider to be God, you know, Father God, the Father, uh, his real name is Elohim. Um, he had a, a literal son named Jesus, uh, and Jesus is like our older brother. And uh, his Jesus name in the Old Testament was Jehovah. So there's a difference. There's Elohim, the God. Then there was Jehovah, who was Jesus. And then we have the Holy Spirit, who is a separate God. They reject the idea of, of the Trinity that, that, that we would call Trinity. Uh, they do use a the term, they use the Godhead to say, no, there are three gods. There, there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, but they are three different beings, and, but they all join together in one purpose um, to, to you know, do the things of God or whatever. Um, but God himself, Elohim, was uh, like we were before. He, he was born a man on some planet uh, of so the, the star was Kalab, and there was a planet that was close by. He was born, uh, and he was exalted, and we'll, we'll look at the concept of the after, afterlife uh, in a little bit. But he was exalted to become who he is now, who is a god to us. And he is the god of, this, uh, of, of us. <laughs> and um, so he was, he was a man. He became a god so that he could have offspring physically, um, and we can get to the point where we become exalted to become the God of our own planet, so eventually, like God the Father is to us, we can be to others, um, and that, that, is, that is official LDS teaching, um, but again, a uh, typical Mormon missionary might not know that, um, and so it's, there's, there's a debate about whether or not should you try to teach the, the Mormon missionary who's at your door, should you try to teach them the actual doctrine of Mormonism before, and so like, I don't know, that, that's an interesting debate there. Um, but that is like official teaching, so we'll, we'll talk about some of that. Okay, so uh, who knows how this got started? What was the guy's name? Yeah, exactly. Joseph Smith, and actually, Joseph Smith Jr. His, his dad was also Joseph Smith. But uh, he was, uh, it says, okay, the fourth of ten children um, to Joseph and Lucy Smith. Um, <clears throat> there have been some major divisions in, uh, in this, this body. Uh, originally, when Joseph Smith started teaching and, and started forming his own church, uh, he called it the Church of Christ. And that was like his, his teachings and all that. And eventually they went through a couple name changes Landed on the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in 1835. And uh, there, were, there have been a, a couple divisions since then, especially since his death. Um, there's, there's a group led by Brigham Young that went to Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, we have that. Uh, we have some other groups that are, are not associated with that who stay, I think, in Missouri. Uh, that, was, that was like the area. Um, this was originally started in uh, Palmyra, New York. That's where... Joseph Smith was from, and uh, we had some, some moving around. Now, a lot of things that you'll, that you'll probably already have in your mind, teachings of the, the LDS, Latter-day Saints, um, is uh, polygamy. Now, um, I think a lot of people today are removing themselves from, from that concept uh, as far as like physical things. Uh, you'll find that there are still practicing polygamists. Uh, Meredith and I have a story about that. I'm not going to share it here. If you're curious, uh, I will <laughs> share that later uh, in private. Really interesting. But um, there's, there's that. Um, and also some, some government things. Now, I, before, <laughs> before I, I, I put in the study to this, I, I had a problem in my mind distinguishing between Jehovah's Witness teaching and Mormon teaching. Uh, and still, even last night, I was t- telling Meredith, I'm like, oh, this is in my, I don't know. Um, because there's, there's a lot of similarities. Um, there are a lot of differences as well. 
right off the top of the bat, can, can you name some similarities between Je Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons? They are. Yeah, that they are. Uh, you're likely to encounter them at your door. Um, they'll probably be knocking on your door to discuss their faith. What else? Right, right, exactly. Although they, they both claim to be Christian, um, the Bible, as we have it, is, is not sufficient. Uh, it, it's not all we need. Um, and, and the teaching is that it was corrupted and uh, changed on purpose, <laughs> intentionally, to mislead and misguide people. And uh, we need a restoration of that. And so they're both considered restorationist movements. Um, because in their mind, what they're doing is trying to restore first century Christianity. Um, and that's, that's what, what they will say that they're doing. Um, so there you go. Both would say the concept of the Trinity is wrong. Um, I think that we would, we would get that. Uh, but a lot of the other things, there, there's a lot of differences as well. Uh, now, if, if you encounter missionaries, Jehovah's Witnesses typically uh, would, would have looked at, and last Sunday I answered a question about that completely wrong. Uh, and it, it was, someone asked, uh, would you expect to see more males, females, whatever? And I was like, well, obviously males. But no, that was, that was my experience. That was a very limited scope uh, yeah, in what I experienced in Lexington. But uh, typically, Jehovah's Witnesses, you'll find husband-wife duos. Um, and that's because it's like a lifelong thing because you want to be, a, be considered a publisher uh, all throughout your life. And so you have to put in at least, I think, an hour a week, hour, something like that, um, publishing Jehovah's Witness teaching. But Mormons, the way that works, the missionaries are typically like uh, either males the age of, I think, 18 to 20, some, something like that. Uh, that. That's changed a little bit, I think. But you, you put in two years of missionary, and the, the church reassigns you to a specific place, maybe even a different country, and tells you to learn a new language. Like, it, it, it could be whatever. But they usually put two people at a time, and uh, the men, they're called elders. Um, and so um, you've probably seen the name tags. And they'll, they'll send you out for two years of service. Yeah. Okay. Right, and the, the age of the, they are, yeah, 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 usually the females, they start their, uh, their ministry there, um, missionary work, a little older, I think they, they start the men at 18, and the, the females start at 20 or something, maybe a little older, um, but yeah, it's, it's looked at, uh, like, socially, if you're a Mormon, um, if, and if you're a male, like, you better be doing the missionary work, uh, because, a lot of times, ladies aren't going to look at it. There, there's been accounts of, of people saying, well, my girlfriend told me she would not marry me unless I did this. Um, and there's a big push, like socially, to do that. Yeah. So are they, are they put into a situation, like you know, say they are moved to Somerset without any sort of uh, uh, support, or is there typically somebody that is kind of like overseeing a region, and if they have a problem or a question, they bring it to go to them? Yeah, so this is, is a, a, a time of really indoctrination where you are sent to a place and there's going to be uh, an older member of the church who is going to sort of take you under their wing. You're going to stay with them. Like, you're going to stay at their house and uh, you're going to report back to them at the end of the day. You know, here's what happened. Here's the conversations I've had. And this is really where a lot of Mormons learn what they actually teach uh, and, and their beliefs. Like, um, it... Happy, it's pretty, pretty consistent that, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, they'll, they'll come in and be like, you know, these people I was teaching, they, they told me Joseph Smith had like 19 wives and he, he married somebody as young as 14. And uh, they're saying that we believe in multiple gods and there's more than one God and all this. And it's that time where, where the older mentors are like, well, yeah. Um, and it, if, if you think about it, this is interesting because uh, of behavior and, and socialization. You're at a time in your life, you know, eight, 18 ish. Um, that's a time, a lot of changes going on. Uh, and, you know, um, you have, 
you really have a lot to lose because you're put in a situation where you're taken away from family, friends, your only support system are other Mormons. And so um, if you make the decision to leave the faith at that point, you're on your own. Um, and that's, that can be scary for a lot of people. And I think that's, that's one thing that, that helps solidify um, people um, in, in the Mormon faith. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And this, I think, is the same, same, same type of concept that we see with Jehovah's Witnesses as well. Um, I, I don't like throwing the word cult out uh, willy-nilly. And, but no, no, I, I yeah, agreed. No, and, but this is. Uh, I think that definitely checks all the boxes um, for what a cult looks like. And not that we, we feel like we have some kind of, animosity or hatred towards the people, like, we, we don't, we don't, like, we want, ultimately, we want to save them from the teaching of uh, the church and the leadership there, because um, I think, by and large, when you meet people who are Mormons, um, they don't have the same type of attitude as some of the leadership, uh, because the leadership, I think, honestly, today, with with as easy it is to, to Google things and research things, um, it, it's, it's pretty easy to show some of the inconsistencies in the Book of Mormon and in Mormon teaching and things throughout the years. Uh, and there, there's a lot of that. Um, but you, you see some deceptions being perpetrated from a high level. Now, when that's passed on to people who aren't in the leadership and, and lower levels, uh, it's you are told to basically accept it without questioning. Um, and and here's, <clears throat> here's one thing, and you may have interacted with some um, Mormons and, and got this, but if, if you've ever had a, a discussion with a Mormon, and, and they, if they probably left a Book of Mormon with you or, or something, um, they'll tell you, read this and pray and ask God if it's true, and he will confirm in your heart that it is. Um, it's, it's an emotional type connection. And so they, they, they call this the, the burning in the bosom. Um, and it's just something that, like, you know that this is true because God, and what they say is that is the Holy Spirit confirming in you that this is true. And um, they, they quote passages like James 1 where it says, uh, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, uh, and he will, he will grant that. Um, so so that's, they'll go to that and say that and, and say, you just need to pray and ask if this is true, and then you will be confirmed and you'll feel it. And so, so think about that. If that is the basis of this faith, that you have a feeling from the Holy Spirit telling you that this is true, then that means no matter what I hear about it, if it's speaking against this, I know, it, you know that can't be right because God confirmed that this is true. So it is, it's, it's kind of difficult sometimes to, to have those conversations. So just know that that's, that's what, what we're facing. That's, that's what uh, you're up against there. Okay, um, today there are about 16 and a half million uh, Mormons in the world. And there's about six and a half million in the U.S. It's, uh, they do surpass Jehovah's Witnesses, um, I, I think. I, I don't remember the figure. I meant to look at that. Uh, oh, yeah, by far. Um, yeah, there's probably about six times as many Mormons in the U.S. than there are Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, now, I think I asked last week how many Jehovah's Witnesses that you've encountered versus how many Mormons, and, and most of you said you had encountered more Jehovah's Witnesses, which was interesting. Um, but there, I, I think that, that, and as Aaron said, he saw some, some Mormons uh, the other day. There's, I've encountered more Mormons here in Somerset, so that's, that's interesting. But there we go. Just a, a little bit of, of, of stuff here. So Joseph Smith in the early 1800s, was said to have uh, had a vision. Uh, what, what he did, and, and there's, there's a few different accounts of exactly how this happened, but uh, from, from putting a lot of this history together, seems like their teaching is that Joseph Smith went out in the woods and prayed and asked God, using the James 1 passage, he prayed and asked God, okay, we have all these denominations out here, um, 
should I be Presbyterian, Methodist, or Baptist? Or, or you know, and that, I think that was like the decision. What, what should I be? Because there's so many differences, and they're not united, and I, I just don't know what to do. What he says is that he saw a vision of two men. Uh, one of them was God the Father, and the other was Jesus. And um, that the Father said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased, hear him. And uh, what is said is Jesus says, uh, all these are wrong. Don't listen to any of it. Don't join any church because they, they are all false. Um, and, and so that's, that's, that's where he went. Then later, he was said to have a vision from an angel called Moroni who led him to discover golden plates. Um, and what, what they're told is those golden plates were buried from like the year 400, 500 AD, somewhere like that. Uh, and they're a record of God's people in the Americas, um, you know, in, in that time period. Like, it, and so in, in the early 1800s, there was a really big push to, to figure out, where did the Native Americans come from? Like, what, what, what did that, how, where did they come from? What's, what's up with them? And so this was, was meant to teach that. And actually, the Book of Mormon is, is pretty much the story of two groups in ancient America um, that were like struggling for power. There was, uh, and supposedly, there was an immigration from Israel. From, and there were a, a group of Jews who came, and uh, there were two major groups. One God approved of, and the other God didn't. Um, and just a little side note here, I think it was the... Uh, on page 82, you see the Lamanites were punished uh, for having victory over God's people, were cursed with dark skin, continued to populate the continent, and became the American Indian race. Um, and there is actually a pretty big history of uh, racism with, with a lot of this. And a lot of the language has been changed to, to not do... Because used to, in their priesthood, uh, if, if you... Uh, or African American, you could not sorry, or, or any co other skin color other than white, uh, you could not be a priest. Not valid. But now that has changed. But there, there's still like this is a quote from um, Book of Alma, uh, chapter three, verse six. The skin of the Lamanites were dark, according to the mark which was set upon their fathers, which was the curse upon them because of the transgression and rebellion against the brethren, who consisted of Nephi, Jacob, and Joseph, and Sam, who were just and holy men. So, like, that's, that's still there, that uh, dark skin is a curse. And, um, you know, obviously, I think, would not be supported with what God teaches. Um, which, that is in opposition to some other teaching, and, and we'll get into some of, some of that inconsistency as well. Okay, oh, did you? Yes, yeah, that is a hundred percent the teaching um, that yeah so this goes with the teaching that um, so all of us, according to Mormon theology, uh, were preexistent in uh, some, what's called the first estate, which is basically the planet that God the Father, Elohim, is in charge of. And God the Father, so we have Heavenly Father, who is married. He has a wife called the Heavenly Mother. I, I've not heard a, a, like an actual name that goes along with that. But they have, like normal human beings, how they have children. They have had billions of children uh, through natural means. But they're born like spirit beings. Uh, and so 
the first firstborn was Jesus, um, Jehovah. Uh, Lucifer was, was another one. But we are all in the same boat. Uh, we just we don't remember of the, any of this because when we come to earth, our, our memories are erased and all that. But uh, yeah, we, we are, are basically the same. And so like when we hear of angels, it's really pre-existent humans. And so we all existed as spirits. And then uh, some of us were, were able to come and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of stuff like in, in Revelation, the, the, the war in heaven between Michael and Satan and, and what happened there. Uh, a third of the host of heaven was, was cast down. Uh, well, that was, that was the people who aligned themselves with Lucifer. And um, they, they were not like the rest of us. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the, the concept there. Yeah, it's a really um, interesting teaching. So the Book of Mormon itself was written in, if, if you read through the Book of Mormon, it's going to sound very King James Version-y. Um, and that's, that is the, the translation that Joseph Smith had available um, of the Bible, anyway. And um, that's what they'll do. You, you were told, uh, as a Mormon, uh, you were told, the Bible is the Word of God, as long as it's been translated correctly. And so, typically, they, they deny all translations except for the King James. If you are going to study with uh, a Mormon, get the King James Version, um, because that's, that's really the only one that they'll be, they'll be willing to read. Uh, and even then, they'll say that there are things that are missing, things that are, are not, aren't not there, and, and it's been corrupted and all that. But it, it's, it's at least the closest. I want to give you an example of this. Can you turn to... Genesis 50, I want to show you something, um, <clears throat> an example of how this has been corrupted. Genesis 50, uh, verse 33. <laughs> anybody, anybody. <clears throat> Let me read you uh, according to the Joseph Tr Smith translation of what Genesis 50 for 33 looks like. That seer will I bless, and they that seek to destroy him shall be confounded. For this promise I give unto you, for I will remember you from generation to generation, and his name shall be called Joseph, and that shall be after the name of his father. And he shall be like unto you. Uh, for the thing with the Lord, and there's, there's some other things. Um, Joseph Smith put a verse in to refer to himself. Uh, Joseph, after the name of his father, Joseph Smith was junior. His father was also Joseph. Um, and so when, when you hear teaching that says, as long as the, the Bible's been translated correctly, uh, they point to this as an example. It's like, this is what we mean. Uh, because we need to have that. There's also uh, some other things that have been, several, it's very similar to the New World Translation uh, of what the Jehovah's Witnesses did. Um, places in, in the Bible that would not support Mormon doctrine have been changed. Uh, and it's, there, there's a really in interesting thing. There was a, a Mormon apologist who was looking at some of this and trying to explain it. But um, there were, okay. The, in 1 Corinthians 15, Talking about, no, no, yes. Ooh, let me look back into that before I tell you because uh, I'll misquote that. It has to do with the concept of the Mormon afterlife um, and um, that sort of thing. By the way, did you know Mormon afterlife consists, so it's not just heaven and hell. There are three levels of heaven. Um, and that, that concept sort of comes from 2 Corinthians 12. When uh, Paul says, I know a man who is called up into the third heaven, um, which, side note, what that probably meant is that, you know, the first heaven was like the atmosphere around us, like, you know, where, where the birds are. Um, and then the second heaven was, was like the stars, the sun, a little further. And then the third heaven, it was just like where God is. Like, we, we can't see that, we can't physically, but, but that's where God is. And that's probably what was meant. That was like the, the concept. But uh, Mormon teaching has that separated. There's the celestial kingdom, the terrestrial kingdom, and the telestial kingdom. Um, 
which that one is not a real word. Um, it, it was something that, that uh, was made up for that. And then you have outer darkness, where, uh, yeah, so three levels of heaven, but then there's outer darkness, which is just, uh, and that's reserved for people who have either fallen away from the Mormon faith, talk against the Mormon faith, um, those sorts of things. Uh, even some of the, the bad people at least go to the lower level of heaven. Um, anyway, that's, that's besides the point. Okay, um, there's this spalding rigdon theory of where the Book of Mormon came from. I'm not so sure about that one, to be honest. Uh, I, I tried to look at, at some of that. Uh, I think this is probably not true. At least, it's not confirmed to be true. There's a lot of eyewitness testimony and some questions about that. So, I don't know that I would bring up spalding rigdon theory because I, I don't know how accurate that is. So, we'll just move on from there. Okay, uh, one of the big things about being a Mormon is family is, is taught. Like, like, it's a family thing. You, you want to be involved with family because family is everything. And some of the teachings that they will have is like, hey, don't you love your family? Don't you want to be with them forever? Um, and you know, that sort of thing. And so that's, that's like really pushed. And so family life is really, really encouraged, and they're, they're talking about that. Uh, and that helps with their socialization, you know, trying to, to get everybody on that, that same wavelength. Uh, if you invite a Mormon in, uh, don't offer them coffee or tea. Um, caffeine is, is a no-no. Um, and that's coffee and tea are rejected, not hot chocolate. Hot chocolate's okay. Um, if you didn't know, chocolate does have caffeine in it. But just, just saying. Uh, but tobacco, alcohol, all that's forbidden as well. Doubt you would offer them that. Um, but there you go. Church government. So here, oh, oh go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> yes. So what Joseph Smith said is that these plates help me translate the, the Book of Mormon. That's what, that's what it was. And uh, God gave him special revelation to be able, and um, the language it was written in was called Reformed Egyptian or something like that. Not a real language. Um, and so that, that was it. But he was, he was according to... History. He was given uh, these, these glasses, like kind of ridiculously huge glasses made of gold, and uh, called them the Urim and the Thummim. Um, and he was able to use those to translate that. And while he was looking at that, he could translate this uh, and write it out so we could understand it. Uh, there, were, there were supposedly three other people who saw that and could confirm that those gold plates existed. By the way, all three of them later recanted and said, no, I really didn't see it. Um, but, but those eyewitness accounts said, yes, we, we have those three things here. But after we were done translating it, the angel Moroni took them back up to heaven. Um, so it was... Yeah, so when, when he was 14, he had the first visions and he, he got those, got the tablets. And I think it, I think it took him like three years to translate it. Yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty true. Okay, yeah, okay. So that was the first, yeah. Okay, so that was the first vision in 1820, but then 1827 he actually dug it. Okay, okay, got it. Um, yeah, so the... I just want to compare this, like, like, just so we understand, like, the implications of this. What would happen, like, why, why do we believe that Jesus raised from the dead? Like, what's, what's some of the biggest evidence of that? Okay, empty tomb. Like, it's, it's there. It's, like, we can confirm Jesus was not in the tomb. Um, and who confirmed that? Multiple eyewitnesses. Um, what would happen to our faith if... Like, 20 years later, the Apostle Peter was like, you know, I really didn't see him. Um, didn't really see Jesus. Uh, kind of made it. And what, ha what would happen if, like, 
all of his disciples eventually came out and said, ah, we didn't really see him. What would that do to our Christian faith? I mean, that, that is like one of the major things. Like eyewitness testimony showed that this, this was a thing. If everyone else later on recanted and said, no, that's, that's not true, that would completely undermine our faith in the event. That is exactly what happened with the Book of Mormon. Um, all like the three major witnesses who saw it, uh, Joseph Smith later called heretics, and, and he, he said, you know, these, especially one guy, he's like, he's an adulterer, he was, uh, you can't trust him, he was, uh, you know, a liar, and it's like, okay, so the liar is the one you want to say, you know, gave the, oh, anyways, that's, that's the con concept of, 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 of that, and, and so why, um, why there are some questions about that, for sure. Um, you'll find that archaeology is not kind to the Mormon faith. Uh, I, I was going to save this one, but I'll, I'll just tell you now because this is just really interesting. So uh, Mormon teaching, they have essentially four books that they consider scripture. Um, King James Version of the Bible, Book of Mormon, uh, Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. And uh, Pearl of Great Price, anyway, is a collection of different works that they've found, discovered, and you'll see different things. In the Pearl of Great Price, there is a book called the Book of Abraham. And what happened is in the 1840s, I think it was, there was uh, a discovery made. There, there was some ancient uh, writings on, on papyrus uh, of some language, and nobody could figure out what it, what it was. Uh, it was... Somebody had it in, in the Americas and, and taken it around. And they're like, we don't know. This, this could be, looks like it could be from the time of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Like, this is, this is that old. And so what happened is a lot of the, the Mormon followers saw that and was like, oh, Joseph Smith can translate it. Um, it's like, we have someone who has the gift of translation. So they, they ended up, the, the church bought this, that, that, those manuscripts and gave it to Joseph Smith, and, and, and he was like, I would be happy to translate it. Um, and it took seven to eight years, I think. And uh, there's, there's like um, evidence of, of like some notebooks that, that he was writing stuff down on, trying to be like, okay, this figure means this, and this means this. And eventually, he said, okay, this came straight from the pen of Abraham. And Abraham wrote this, and this is the book of Abraham. And there were these, these, these pictures, um, hieroglyphs on there. And uh, he was like, this picture is God. And this is Abraham. And this is the God of Egypt named whatever. And he had th different things ascribed to different things. And so but this, was, this was great because he, he had, okay, this is what these words are. Here is exactly what each of those words mean. So, like, if you're a Mormon and you're seeing that, it's like, Perfect. We have something that we can confirm later because, like, as of right then, nobody knew how to translate. Nobody even knew what the language was. Um, but little did they know that in Europe, they had discovered the Rosetta Stone, um, which helped to start to understand what Egyptian was and some of those languages. Uh, and so there was some independent stuff. Now, here, here's the thing. Um, after a while, they lost those original manuscripts. Um, they did have Joseph Smith's, like, in their book of Abraham, they had drawings and, and all of this other stuff. But when it turned out that, that we had the information that we could confirm that, the manuscripts were missing. But later on, um, there was a discovery made. They actually found these manuscripts, the exact copies that Joseph Smith had. And the Church of uh, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints confirmed that, yes, those are the manuscripts. That is exactly what Joseph Smith had. Then they had some people who could actually translate it. And, and it was like, perfect, we're going to prove that Joseph Smith is the prophet. You know what happened? They, they were like, this is actually from an Egyptian book of the dead. And these are, uh, this is not at all Abraham and, you know, you know this word does not mean Elohim, it means you know, this. And, and it was like burial rituals of Egyptians. And there's a lot of gory details that I'm not going to go into right now, but uh, of what they did with like the organs and stuff, how they, how they got them out, how they 
preserved uh, and em embalmed people and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and so that was what the writing was about. Um, what Joseph Smith had said is that, no, this is, this is from God, and this was Abraham that wrote that, and it was, it was proved to, to be false. Um, now, a lot of Mormons nowadays have not heard that. Uh, and so this, that is little, no extra charge. That's something that you could look into uh, and be like, okay, the book of Abraham, that was supposedly Joseph Smith's big moment to show that he can actually translate this stuff. Didn't turn out to be accurate. Um, and so that's, I think that's, that's very telling. All right. Um, so there you go. As far as the uh, church government and how it works, this is how it works to this day. And okay, let, let, me, let me take a step back again. What Joseph Smith will say about why things were corrupted is because when we had Jesus, when we had the 12 apostles on the earth, they were the authority from God. They were able to say, this is right, this is wrong, uh, you know, this, is, this is what we believe. Um, but after the, the last apostle died and there were no apostles left, everybody just sort of did their own thing. And, and we have this disunity and we, we have people arguing and stuff. And so what Joseph Smith says is we need those 12 apostles to say this is what the doctrine is and this is what it means. So um, right now, what it, what it is, you have the overall president, uh, also known as the prophet. So at any given time, there is the prophet of the Latter-day Saints. And so you have the prophet who is able to, it's, it's, he's like the Pope. Um, he, he's able to take messages from God and, and give them to the people. You have the 12 apostles, um, and they have the authority that the apostles would have had. Then you have the, you know, more local areas, regional areas than local, the presiding bishopric. You have the four, uh, first and second quorum of the 70, also known as the general authority of the 70. And uh, it's just this council who is uh, sort of in charge of, of the, the area. Okay, so anyways, those, that group is looked at as having all authority um, of being able to say what is true. Now, the thing is, and this I think is very similar to how Jehovah's Witnesses worked and, and how to look at some of this. If you can show that any teaching has been inconsistent at any point at all, um, in the history of, of this people, I think that undermines the principle by which they set out to, to show. Um, you know what I mean? They are very much, much so, um, you know, this is the authority from God. Um, and, and God is, is showing us the truth. So, there it is. Uh, sacred works, that's what we just said, the, those four things. Um, speaking of differences, on page 84, there is uh, at least an insight into some of the changes from the original 1830 edition of the Book of Mormon and the 1981 edition. Uh, that if you have a Book of Mormon, it's probably 1981. Um, they don't want those older ones to get out there. There are some things that they will say uh, to try to defend the earlier edition and say why there's so many changes. We'll talk about that, Lord will, on Wednesday. Um, but we'll get into some other things and some of the main teachings. Then, don't forget, let me know what, what else you want to talk about, so what next week's going to look like. Think about that. All right, thanks, everybody.